All right, chat and anyone watching, I have with me Izzy Cruz from the Digi Academy. A few people wanted to see his yellow purple hybrid deck from yesterday's video or today's video. I lost my train of thought. But anyway, yes, this is a BT7 yellow hybrid list. Izzy has made some changes since and he wants to show it off. So it's all yours, Izzy. Go for it. All right. Uh, thank you, Mario. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Izzy Cruz, aka Straw Hat Izzy on YouTube, uh, uh, the Izzy Cruz on Twitch, and a uh, deck I've been testing a lot is a uh, yellow hybrid with a uh, little bit of spice guards Mario already talked about. Uh, so I'll start with the main rookie of the deck, Pokemon. Uh, usually I start with the eggs, but I'll talk about those later. Uh, for those who don't know, because these are fairly new cards and these are proxies, we don't have these available in America yet. Uh, Pokemon is an on three uh, white Digimon that says on play, look at the top five cards of your deck, add any tamer and any hybrid card, one of each to your hand, and then once per turn, if you Digivolve over a tamer, reduce uh, gain two memory. So you can Digivolve over your tamer for two, and then gain two memory, making it a free, ta uh, free hybrid, basically. Uh, so that's what Pokemon does. You expect to see him in like almost every hybrid deck. Uh, I don't particularly love him at four, like I might come down to like two or three. But as far as a basic search engine, he's he's really strong. Uh, from there, let's go ahead and talk about the hybrids. Uh, for Kazemon, this is your Lobomon, Agunimon, whatever basic hybrid you really want to compare it to. Nothing too much to talk about. Uh, for Zephyrmon, so a lot of the new hybrids in the set have this ability, where they digivolve over their respective tamers and get the effect, or digivolve over a hybrid and get the effect. So what Zephyrmon does is, if you Digivolve over a Tamer, uh, reduce its cost by one, basically make it a two drop uh, to evolve over a Tamer. Uh, if you Digivolve over a Zoe or a Hybrid, uh, you, which over a Champion you can do for one, because it Digivolves over a Champion for one, Digivolves over a Rookie for three, uh, your security gets plus 3,000 until the end of your opponent's next turn, which can stunt your opponent from wanting to attack your security because your things can get so beefy. Uh, there's points where you can get your security up to like 8k, 10k, so even decks like Justmon, which get to very high DP values, don't want to be swinging at your cards. So this card's uh, fairly strong, and it gives you like another champion uh, hybrid to be able to play. So for Zephyr, uh, then for the most broken card in the set, probably, uh, Jet Selfimon. So what this card does is, if uh, you have a Digimon on field that has a Tamer in its source, so mainly any hybrid that Digivolves over a Tamer, you digital to this thing by reducing the cost by two. So it is a one drop ultimate. One drop ultimate. Imagine just going champion to ultimate for, for three. If you have a Pokemon, doing that for one. Absurd. Uh, the other broken part of this effect is that on Digivolve, recover one. You don't have to be at three. You don't have to be at less than three. You don't have to be at any specific amount. It's just recover one. It's just absurd. At any point of the game, you can use this effect. Uh, and then, like, this card is just so powerful. It's the best level 5 hybrid that we got in this set, for sure. And it's why yellow hybrid is even at the point that it is, because it just keeps you in the game for so long. Uh, as far as other ultimates, I'm playing two copies of Rise Greymon. Uh, this one gives you aggression, because it gives you security attack plus 1. And on top of that, uh, whenever you digital over a tamer, you're basically losing a resource that you had to play earlier in the turn. Uh, and this card replaces that resource that you use, because what you usually do is digital over this, digital over this, play a new tamer. So then you didn't lose a tamer and you got your value by drawing two. Uh, giving security plus one is really strong, and just being able to play free tamers is really powerful as well. Uh, the main use I use for this is to play cards like TK and Kari, or uh, Baby TK, because those cards don't have on-play effects, and Rise Greymon doesn't give cards that it plays on-play effects. But those cards give you value in later games, so you mostly use it to play your 4-drop TK and Cardi for free, which is uh, a lot of value. Uh, from there, we'll go into the Megas. The Megas are all toolboxy. Uh, in hybrid format, your Megas don't matter as much, so you can really just choose whatever Megas you want to play, but these are the ones I've chosen. Uh, I chose two Shine Greymon because it is a Tamer deck, so you play a lot of Tamers. Uh, being able to nuke the Megas, which uh, this deck usually struggles with, is very important. As well as being able to give it like security plus one and just being a big body because of your Tamer mounts. 
is uh, pretty powerful. Uh, next to Box Topper Seraphim on. So this card reads, uh, when digivolving, if you have a tamer, which should be pretty much always, recover one. And then on deletion, recover one. So what this allows you to do is recover one on digivolve, swing. If it dies, you recover another card, so it basically replaces itself. Um, if it doesn't die, you're continuously allowed to get value, and your opponent has to deal with it. And then when they do deal with it, uh, you get free value by recovering, making it a little bit harder for them to close out your game. Uh, from there, we played one Dynas one. Because uh, this card's really only a defensive weapon, very rarely do you use its first effect to mill a card, uh, because you don't really want to look at the top six and take Digimon, right? You want to be constantly playing Tamers, and this card mills Tamers a lot of the time. So we just use it as the defensive option to where, like, if they put us a little too low, we can stop them from killing us. Uh, that's it for Omegas. Uh, and then the last two higher end Digimon in the deck are two Sasanin one. But even with Mega Digimon Fusion being banned, this card is absurd in this deck. Because this deck gives you so much time and memory and different things like that. That allows you to digivolve into this card for basically free. Um, you never deck out because of this card, you get to recycle. Uh, and then being able to put out aggression in the mirror is very powerful. So a lot of the mirror is dictated by how well you use your Susanoo Mons. If you use your Susan Mons poorly, you will not do well in the mirror. If you use them fairly wisely, uh, you'll do exceedingly well in the mirror. So, uh, from there, let's go ahead and talk about the Tamer cards. Uh, for TK, because consistency in this year go to 3 Tamer. These Tamers are very important in this format. Uh, because if you go to 3 turn 1, you can play another 3 drop Tamer, and then you can play another 3 drop Tamer, or 2 drop Tamer, or 4 drop Tamer. It allows you to play more Tamers in the following turns past turn 1, than just being able to play like a 3 drop, and then like you have to wait, and then pass, and then wait, and then pass. So, getting value that way is very potent. Um, for Zoe, for anyone who doesn't know, this is the new uh, Tamer for Zephyrmon and Jet Sylphie, where uh, on play, Look at your security, so it does what TK does. Take a hybrid, and if you took a hybrid, recover one. Uh, if you don't find a hybrid, you don't recover anything, you don't take anything. And then, these tamers actually have inheritables. This one is, uh, during your all turns, I think, uh, your security gets plus 3,000. So, it might say your opponent, so it might be all turns, but it usually doesn't matter. Uh, your security just gets plus 3,000, making it even beefier under, like, Zephyrmon, or like baby TK, it, it just makes it so that your opponent is deterred from losing their stack and security. And if they don't have a tamer, they could hit like a two drop and then their 8k is just deleted. So uh, these cards give you the consistency to beat every other matchup in the format basically. Uh, and give you the recovery and allow you to do what I think is the most important thing about yellow hybrid. Is uh, crafting your own security. But you can craft your security in any way, shape, or form you like. You take unknowns out of the game. So it allows you to play better, uh, not having to rely on your own security and forcing your opponent, or even you could bluff it that like you have something good in your security because you have that knowledge now. So uh, these cards are very potent. I wouldn't play any less than of these cards. Uh, from there we play three TK and Kari. This is the best card in the mirror because uh, if your opponent ever lets you get too much memory, they lose the game instantly. Because unless they play like Blinding Ray, specifically, or unless they TK at a card that's not yellow, which a lot of the mirror match does not do, uh, they're constantly giving you way too much memory. And because they can never kill you, because yellow doesn't kill fast enough, you can recover to a point where you're always one behind as far as security in them, and then put out multiples of these, and start your turn at 10 for multiple turns. And if you have Pokemon, you get like free value out of that as well. So this is the most important card in the mirror. Um, definitely play at least three of this, I wouldn't cut this down anymore. Uh, from there we play 3 of the baby TK, plus 2,000 all your security. Uh, if there was another tamer that cost you 2, I'd probably play that one over this. Because like the security buff is cool, but uh, it doesn't do anything. It's just the fact that this is a, is a 2 cost tamer, so if you go to 3, you're allowed to just play 2 of these, putting your opponent to 1 if they don't have a memory tamer. Uh, you can play 1 of this, and then like a TK and Kari if they do have a memory tamer, so that it's perfect value. Uh, if you're at four, you can play two of this, and then like play a Zoe to put them to three. Uh, it it just gives you really good math into your memory, so that's why we play three of it. And I think that is six and fourteen tamers. 
which is a good amount because you can always recycle them with uh, Susanamon. Uh, from there, we play one Reinforced Memory Boost because this card is at one starting the ban list. Um, to be honest, it's like not that great. The only real thing I like about it, I don't even really like the recovery, so uh, it might switch, but it, it's whatever. Uh, the gain three memory is the huge part because if you ever go to four and then you're able to gain three, you can Susano for free that turn. Or if uh, you're at three, you have a Pokemon on field, you could Susano for five that turn and then still have one memory left over so you can like do things that way. So just gaining the memory is fine. Um, you don't have to play this, it could be like yellow memory boost, it could be blinding ray so that your mirror is a little better. Uh, it's preference, but I just chose this because it has a security effect. Um, from there we play two Wyvern's Breath, because you need something that deals with top end. Currently the only cards in the deck that deal with the top end are a Dasanu or the Shine Greymon, which aren't always viable options. Um, and like sometimes even just casting Wyverns for eight isn't that bad, right? Because they either have to rebuild a stack or like they have to get to another Sasanu, get to another uh, whatever card. And hitting this card in security is obviously really good. Uh, plays around cards like Craniumon plays around a lot of cards that, you know, can't be destroyed but can have their stuff depleted. Uh, very good into Goblin Bond, which we'll see some amount of play. Very good into the red hybrid matchup, so it's time to play two of it. Uh, from there, I'm going to talk about the cards that make my deck a little bit different from the standard yellow deck. I'm playing four copies of Demi Marimon. Uh, this egg could be Xiaomon if you want to, just so that you have more removal into the top end. Uh, I go back and forth between both of them, but it's just if I have to swing the rookie, I want to get some type of value out of it. So I chose Demi Mara for now, I could go back to Xiao at any point. Uh, two Tapermon, because on deletion draw a card. So it gives you the aggression you need to be able to just draw two cards and discard extra cards of things you don't need. Uh, you can even discard Tamers, because Susana puts them back. Or you can discard like Pokemon that you're not going to use in the future. So uh, a lot of power there, and a lot of aggression you get from that. And two Gazimon. Uh There are points where I really want just this to be or Gazi, theoretically, uh, because this card is insane against uh, Pokemon specifically. Very good against Green. Very good against Blue. Um, fairly good against Jessmon as well. So it, it stops a lot of their power plays. Um, which is why, like, maybe even cut two Pokemon to play, like, two more Gossimons, right? That way I have a rookie that I can evolve over Demimara. And just this card being able to stop this card helps so much in so many matchups. And it stops decks like Lilith as well, which is still fairly popular in BT7. But if you have this, and then you out-recover Lilith's, like, aggression, like, they just never beat you. So, uh, tip for purple rookies. And then the last four cards in my deck are Swarge, Lower Arts, I'm pretty sure I'm saying it right, but I could be saying it wrong. Uh, this card is broken. I, I don't know why they ever printed this card. It is a 6-drop purple option that says uh, for every Tamer or Hybrid on your field, any amount of Tamers or Hybrids on your field, delete a level 5 or lower Digimon on the field. That security effect is activate the main effect. So. Because you get to craft your security, there are a lot of times where you'll have like two or three of these in your security due to like TK and uh, Zoe. So what you do is you just set up teamers, right? And then if they go wide, you punish them with this. If they hit your security and they hit this, it's a board wipe a lot of the times. Uh, I've had games where I've just like, in, at like six memory, right? Um, Swars hit all my opponent's sister mons and their level fives or lowers, and all wyverns are just one, and then you just have no board state. So, yeah, I'm putting in the eight, but it just does so much. And then in a, in a hybrid format, you're just killing Pokemons, uh, Gazis, Madoki Vedas, like anything that's level five or lower, and then you have cards that deal with your top end, uh, making it like super powerful, right? It makes it impossible for your opponent to go wide uh, against this deck, which, which is very good, because when they start going wide is how they can chip you down very quickly before you can recover enough. But just stopping that aggression is super powerful. Uh, and that's why I chose to play it. This is probably the best card in my deck, to be honest with you. And uh, that's my deck. It's been doing really well. Um, it is a different uh, iteration than the one I played Mario with. The other one played Purple Cards, which I didn't think are necessary anymore. 
I, I don't even think you play that card like at all for a while. Um, it's really good into a lot of the format. Um, yeah, so it's it's just so strong, guys. I recommend trying it out. The mirror match with this card becomes a lot easier if they're playing pure yellow. It because you're playing this card, it's just so free. Uh, it blows out like decks like Lord Knight, blows out most tower decks. Uh, Little Fluke can't recover after being hit with this. So, that's my deck, guys. I have one question uh, before before we end this. Um, sure. In the uh, in the iteration that uh, mm -hmm. I uploaded to YouTube, you were also playing BT4 War Greymon on the deck. Were you playing that because of the mirror match? Mm -hmm. And if so, why are you not playing it now? So the theory with War Greymon was because I was playing Purple Kari, uh, I wanted to have as many cards that triggered Purple Kari as possible, right? Like I was playing two copies of Laomon so that I could digivolve over the Purple Kari, um, and War Greymon triggers that card. The issue I have with War Grey in a deck like this is it takes from your security and doesn't kill enough. So the, the main issue the deck has is standing Megas. So I just have to play cards that outright just deal with standing Megas. Uh, Slash doesn't do it, Wargrave doesn't do it. So the goal at that point is just deal with their surrounding bodies, make my security really big so if they do swing, there's a high chance it just dies, um, and then punish their top end with powerful cards like Wyverns or like Shine or uh, things like that. Because as far as I know right now, there's no top end yellow card, Mega, that really deals with Megas, if that makes sense. Slash can't do it on its own. Um, Wargrave can't do it on its own unless the thing's already suspended. Lord Knight can't do it. Kazuchimon can't do it. Um, there, there's just no cards that do it. So it's, it's literally just Shine to... Gray, and then you need Tamers to do it. It's literally just Shine Gray. Yep. Yep. So you just Shine Gray for the, the top end, and then this card literally deals with every other card. There, there's You're hitting level 5 or lower. There's just no way you don't do it. And then between like Zephyr, Zoe, and like a TK, right, which isn't really hard to do, your security is plus 8,000. So if they're an 11k and they swing to anything that's 3k or higher, it dies. Right. So it just makes my opponent... It, it, you you want to hold aggression as much as possible, and then recover out of range of lethal. You don't need to like over recover, or recover, right? You just need to recover out of range of lethal. And then from there, you start to chip their security. You're basically playing like, um... It, it's similar to Lord Knight, where you get advantage instead of through bodies on field. You get body, you get advantage through tamers and through your security being its own weapon itself, um, and through card advantage between these two cards, because this lets you sculpt your security and also lets you keep a sizable hand size. Uh, I don't lose value out of playing these, whereas I lose value out of playing Tommy or Koji or Takuya, right? Because those just play and don't do anything. Right. So, uh, Tommy being good, but only good at my opponent has a stack, right? And those things won't have a stack in this format, especially the stack. Okay. And one final question or consideration, then then I'm done. Uh, so the purple option, the Schwartz, is uh, obviously very strong. Like, killing level 5s and under, really, really, really good. You can't underestimate that card. And if you're playing against anything with purple, you should expect to see that card in your deck. Now, that being said, what do you think about the format potentially evolving uh, to a point where, like, you know, it's, it's a tamer format or a hybrid format, so people have multiple tamers on the field, right? And they're literally just going one at a time, you know, evolve a tamer swing, evolve a tamer swing, evolve a tamer swing type of thing, only keeping one body on board the whole time. Do you think if most, if more decks play like that, then the purple option just maybe s starts to see less play? Or do you think that the format is just so, too wide open right now where people will just be going wide no matter what anyway? Because some decks just automatically go wide inherently by nature. Not every deck can just do that with hybrid, tamer, hybrid, tamer, hybrid, tamer. One at a time. Yeah, so I have a, a like a high thought process for this, right? Sure. Um, this card in in most tamer decks right is only meant to deal with like pokemons and like gazi specifically so uh nobody we're doing a deck profile right now for youtube just letting you know um so it's it's meant to deal with like pokemon specifically or like gazi right the tamer evolve kill thing like tamer evolve swing so here's the issue with that one they're giving up a tamer 
the hybrid might potentially die, or the other thing is I get a free tamer for free, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then if they can consistently keep doing that, it doesn't matter anyway, because the Jet Sophie allows me to recover any damage that they're going to chip on every single turn. So, like, if you chip me for two, all right, Jet Sophie, recover one. I'm not lethal. I have mm -hmm. four tamers in play. Um, and a lot of the times they don't have the memory to do multiple tamers or multiple um, attacks in one turn. Like, the most you can do if you have a TK out is, like, play a hybrid for two and then evolve and then swing, possibly. But then you committed three cards to get one check-in, possibly die, or give me a free tamer. Like, it's just not, not a viable strategy. Okay. Um, the only real viable strategy against yellow is, like, what red is doing, where they take multiple checks at a time, um, and this just punishes that so hard. So an Aldemon that's like 16k, 17k, right? A Wyvern says a kill it, it very rarely will die to this, but it will always die to this card. Um, yeah, and then because red doesn't keep a hand size, we just outgrind them in that aspect. Okay, very nice. Uh, thanks for deck profile, Izzy. Really appreciate it. Really. Th Appreciate the insight, dude. Well done.